main idea. Get uh, guaranteed transmission for applications that need it. If you have an application that needs a guaranteed transmission time, it can fit in here in the uh, contender free period. Um, free access, uh, free access to the channel, which is within the um, uh, Contention access period. So if you have uh, data to transmit on demand, you can just transmit from there. And idle time. And the idle time is to allow the devices to sleep and save their battery. While the beacon, as the beacon is transmitted, um, that keeps everyone synchronized. So basically, what you do is you shut off your radio. You would know the beacon interval. So each device would go through the super frame, shut off the radio, uh, wait the idle time until getting close to when they would expect the next beacon, activate the radio, listen for the beacon, and once the beacon is heard, they can start transmitting again. So. Another thing that's going on here. So imagine, um, so imagine this is a uh, a, um, a personal area network with a full function device connected to a bunch of uh, reduced function devices. So the idea with the beacon is that it's transmitted by the coordinator, and the coordinator is a full function device. <coughs> because it's a full function device, we imagine that it would probably have access to extra energy resources. So it's okay for the beacon to stay awake, maintain uh, a timestamp, and keep transmitting this powerful beacon to all of its neighboring devices. Um, any other device uh, need not transmit during the super frame. It can just stay silent. So the, uh, all the other devices can just sleep, to, sleep through the entire super frame if they like. The only device that's required to keep transmitting all the time is the coordinator. So only one device can transmit through the beacon period? Uh, the beacon interval? No. Um, any device can transmit in the, in the contention access period. And if, uh, so in this, in this uh, scenario, I've divided the contention free period into four slots. Uh, so those would presumably be ac uh, accessed by four different devices. But if there's, if there's a reduced function device out there that doesn't have anything to send, they can just sleep through the uh, sleep through the uh, period. So one device is given two opportunities to transmit. Yes, yes. But presumably, if you've negotiated for one of these, you probably won't yes. won't try to transmit it. The RFP needs to respond to the channel for the error to from other RFPs. For the error. To the channel free to ah, I see. Only, only in here. Um, so, in the contention access period, that's when, um, basically, that's that's free and unallocated time. So, if if the channel is available during that time, you are allowed to transmit. But uh, uh, when the RFD is parted uh, very far, they cannot sense. Ah, I see. So this this comes back to this. Oh. I, this comes back to the same problem that, that uh, someone pointed out last time with, with the uh, Wi-Fi medium access, is that it's, it's subject to the hidden terminal problem. And I, unfortunately, I said I would um, I would come up with a solution. I'd look up the solution for that, and I forgot. However, I, it, it seems to me that uh, within Wi-Fi, they, they use something like Mac up to clear to, to clear the neighborhood. Here, I have no idea. Here, I have no idea. <coughs> but good question. Good question. So what? Uh, RFP that has sent in CAP will not send in CHP. Uh, I mean, they're allowed to. Okay, they're you're allowed to send in both. But if you have a if you have a guaranteed slot and you negotiate for that guaranteed slot, presumably you've got enough resources that you don't have. To. So it's unlikely, but it is possible. Okay, um, that sums up what I want to say about 802.15.4. So remember, 802.15.4 is a lower layer protocol. It's a, uh, 
it's a um, it's a, a, a local local area networking uh, type protocol that, that's only intended to solve issues at the physical layer and at the data link layer directly above it. Different solutions are required at the network layer and above. So, for instance. Um, above 802.50.4, other protocols implement higher layer functions. One example of a protocol that sits on top of, and possibly the most famous example of a protocol that sits above 802.15.4 is called Zigbee. Um, so Zigbee basically completes 802.15.4 by providing uh, all of the all of the higher layer uh, network functions. In particular, one that it provides is routing, and the method that Zigbee uses for routing, which we're going to review in today's class, is called ad hoc. On demand distance vector or AODB. So uh, Zigbee actually provides for another uh, routing protocol. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but the one that we're going to talk about is this one, AODB. It's a little more famous. Start for the peer to peer. Uh, are they allowed to contact each other? Uh, no. So, um, in the feature of the RFP is that it's only allowed to connect to um, full function devices. However, uh, you're not in peer to peer um, topology, you're not stuck with the star. So, for instance, if I have an FFP. Star topology, I would have to be something like this. But in peer to peer, other arrangements are possible. Okay. <coughs> 